Happy Easter from Christ Church Woodside. We're in the heart of Queens with the heart for Queens. Easter continues. The shutdown continues. Our stay-at-home lives continue, and Jesus continues to be the risen Lord and Savior. Today we realize just how much Jesus is with us in our homes and in our hearts. Christ still lives, Easter is still here, and there is hope. I'm here today with Sean Beckett, our Minister of Music, Amy Holman and David Shields, who are working hard in tech and innovative ways to make all this happen. Carly Restrepo, who is signing for our deaf members and friends. I'm Pastor Josh Holman. You'll also see the words to our songs today found in the comments section on YouTube, and you can find them as well on our church Facebook post of this service, Christ Church Woodside. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we focus on God's healing power, a psalm of God who is full of compassion, Psalm 145. I will extol you, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty, on all of your wondrous works. Many shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteousness. For the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. His tender mercies are over all of his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord. All your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the power of your kingdom and talk of your glory, to make known to others your mighty acts and the glorious majesty of God's kingdom. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. And the Lord upholds those who fall. He raises up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will hear their cry and save them. For the Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. But my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. And all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we come before you today realizing anew how much we need your presence and healing power. Forgive our sins. Forgive our fears and worries. Forgive our hurt and pain. You are near to all those who call on you, and you are gracious, full of compassion. Renew and strengthen us to realize your love in our hearts, in our homes. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our Easter celebration continues. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're looking at Easter stories in the Bible. Today our reading begins on that first Easter Sunday and ends in our homes. A reading of good news from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is evening. The day is now far spent. So he went in and stayed with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour. They returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is one of my favorite episodes in the Bible. One of brokenness and presence, sadness and hearts of flame with the mystery of God's presence. It's Easter Sunday. Two disciples, a father and a son, are on their way home to Emmaus. Jesus is dead, body missing, strange news about visions of angels, but no Jesus. Time to go home. Jesus appears to them, but they are kept from recognizing Jesus. And Jesus asks them questions. What are you talking about? And they stood still, looking sad. Jesus asks us today, what's everyone talking about? Haven't you seen the news? There's a global pandemic. We're all staying home. There's fear and uncertainty, suffering and pain. It can make us stand still and look sad. It's okay to be sad. Plans changed in this crisis. Lives altered. Regular routines gone. Jesus presses on to listen to us in sadness, to be with us 
when we are struggling. Jesus loves to hear about himself, Jesus who is with us in good times and in bad. The life of Jesus is the mystery of communion, of the one who comes to our world of fear and uncertainty, suffering and pain. And when we feel sad, it's good to remember Jesus, who knows our griefs and our pains. The same Jesus of Nazareth, mighty in deed and word, condemned to death, crucified, who invites us to consider it's foolish to think that everything can ever be normal in our world. There's nothing normal about sin and suffering. There's nothing normal about all the pain and hurt happening now. Jesus knows all this, and so he suffers, he dies, and he rises to be with us, to enter into our conversations, especially now. He calls us today to not be slow of heart to believe that it was necessary that the Christ should suffer these things to enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interprets to us in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And Jesus tells us that the Bible is all about him, about Jesus, about his suffering for our world his rising for this global pain, his power to save. There's hope in Jesus who is with us. As they near home, Jesus looks like he's going further, keeping on that social distance, but they urge him to stay with them. And at table, Jesus takes bread. He blesses it and breaks it and gives it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they recognize Jesus. And Jesus vanishes from their sight. And they say to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? We haven't been able to break bread at this table. Haven't been able to bless it and give it. And I don't know about you, but my heart still burns with the presence of Jesus. And while we are absent from this table, Jesus is present in our hearts. After all, absence is presence in Jesus. And even in moments of sadness and suffering, when it seems like Jesus isn't there, he shows up and he joins our conversations, asking us, What's on our hearts? What's on our minds? And Jesus listens and shows us the world as it really is. Wonderful and fragile and hurting. And Jesus shows us who he really is. Wonderful and the one who suffers with us, who rises and lives for our world for each and every one of us, who rises to give us all hope. And when we break bread, when we eat in our homes, at our tables, wherever we're staying during this crisis, Jesus is there. Broken bread for a broken world, with eyes opened to see Jesus. Being chosen, blessed, broken, and given is the sacred journey of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And when we break bread in our homes, eating simple meals, it's time to express our commitment to make our lives conform to the life of Christ. That we too want to live again as chosen, blessed, broken, to be food for our world, strength for one another. The disciples' hearts burned within them in faith, in hope, in love. This week especially, in our homes, may our hearts feel the presence of Jesus. Amen.
Apostles' Creed, the heart of our faith in God who is with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for all those in need today, for strength to keep on in faith, hope, and love. We pray. Jesus Christ, born of the Father before all ages, who took upon yourself our humanity and you rose for us. Son of God, source of life, we invoke your goodness upon us and upon the entire human family. Allow us to live by your life and to walk as children of light in the joy of Easter. Increase the faith of your church. May Christians here and everywhere faithfully bear witness to your resurrection. Comfort all who are burdened and engrave in their hearts your words of eternal life. Strengthen those who are weak in faith and reveal yourself to doubting and disbelieving hearts. During this time especially, give strength to the sick. Be with all those suffering from this virus, all those who mourn and grieve. Reassure them all with your saving presence. We pray for an end to this virus, an end to this crisis. Living Jesus, be with our hurting world and give us your healing power. Jesus Christ, Son of God, be now with those who really need our prayers. You, Lord, know who they are. You search our hearts. You give us peace. By the love with which you drew near to your disciples as they went to Emmaus and talked together of your passion, draw near to us and join yourself to us. By the blessing in which you made yourself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, May every act of yours to us be a revelation, opening our eyes in faith, making you more fully known to us. Bless our homes and our hearts, Lord Jesus, with your forgiveness. Abide with us, Jesus, again today and always. By the power, Lord Jesus, by which you vanished out of the disciples' sight, with their faith in the mystery of your resurrection, so that it might be increased. Strengthen and confirm this faith in us. By the fire of the Spirit, inflame our hearts in devotion to you, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Easter keeps on going here at Christ Church Woodside. We keep on keeping on in faith in our homes during this time apart. While we might be at home, Jesus is with us, especially during this time. He's with us as we are one in the Spirit. So remember during this time to keep together. Keep together with God in prayer. Even when we don't understand what is happening or wonder how long all this will last, God is here to enter our hearts in prayer with his presence. Keep together with one another by text or talk or email. Keep reaching out to others. We're all in this together. 
Keep together in giving to God as Easter continues. We're still asking for a special Easter offering. We give to God who keeps us all together and gives us so much more than we could ask. You can give to our church securely on our website and check for updates on our church Facebook. You can also mail your offerings to our church and our address is on our church website and our church Facebook. Take to heart again this week just how much God loves us in Jesus. Just how much Jesus is with us in our hearts and in our homes. Receive the blessing of our living Lord. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves to others. You have raised us with Christ and made us new. As people of the resurrection, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.